Texans are in the playoffs for the first time against the Cincinnati Bengals. And we're going to talk Texans. And I know you found something encouraging in the 23-22 loss to Tennessee. And like you said, it was a loss, and you very rarely find things encouraging in a loss. But before the game, when they made Owen Daniels, Jonathan Joseph, Arian Foster all inactive, it just had that preseason feel. You knew the team wasn't playing for the victory. And I hate that phrase because those guys on the field sweating and laying it on the line, they're trying to win, but you just knew the management, the coaches, they wanted to get through that game without any injuries and get ready for the playoff game. With that being said, they were playing against an eight and seven team that needed that win to keep their playoff berth hopes alive and they still kept it very close with a bunch of second and third stringers what that tells me is the scheme is good not just the backup players are pretty good but the scheme that coach Kubiak has that Wade Phillips has on the defensive side is a good scheme if you could keep a bunch of backups who are going against starters on a winning team who need to go to the playoffs in a very close game and let's be real it came down to the last play and they could have done different things to put that team into overtime which we'll get to later but they just decided to get out of that game I was very very much encouraged about what I saw and we saw the return of James Casey somebody we've been wondering about where he He's been we know how productive he can be from the fullback position he hasn't been around since he came back from his injury but he showed everybody what he could do they targeted him seven times he had seven catches for 91 yards they're going to need that type of production in the playoffs what's that right thing you do who do you win all right. that, that's what happens i want him to win because <laughs> i picked him 11 5 before the season had been only the second time I ever got him right but naturally i missed that one too i wish i still think they should have won just because of the momentum of a of a three game losing streak going into the season. Although players didn't react as badly after that one as they did the two previous ones because they knew the situation and they knew it wasn't that Kubiak didn't take it seriously, but when you're emptying your bench, right. like it's a preseason game, they're not taking, they want the backups to win that game and they didn't. Now, Antonio Smith had four and a half sacks when Mario Williams was playing. Mario goes down for the season. He has none for 10 games. Then he explodes. What was up with Antonio? I don't think anything was up with Antonio. Antonio was playing Antonio football. That's what he is. He's a versatile guy on passing downs. He'll move down to the three technique. That's the edge of the guard. It's a little bit harder to get sacks from there. That's why when you look at the stat leaders in the sack department, it's usually outside linebackers and defensive ends. So for Antonio Smith to end the season with six and a half sacks, the most for a Texan defensive lineman, second on the team, I'm proud of him. He's been a guy that from day one, I've been impressed with the way he plays plays, but the casual fan will just open up the paper after they read your great articles and look at the stats and see that he only has three, four, five sacks for the year and wonder why he receives so much money. It's not because of the stacks. It's because of what he can do. This guy is a player. He brings so much energy. He has the best celebration in the NFL, which keeps everybody loose, keeps everybody enjoying the game. And I just really think that because of what he's done now as far as sack totals, he's starting to open the eyes of the casual fan and people are starting to realize that this guy, he could get it done going after the passer and stopping the run. You don't get credit for pressures. You don't get credit for quarterback hits, and he gets a lot of those. People don't realize what a good leader Antonio is. After the game, he stood up and talked to the players about putting it behind him because he's one of those guys played in the Super Bowl with Arizona when they had no business being in the Super Bowl, right. put on one of those postseason runs like the Packers did last year when the Packers had to win the last game to get to the playoffs. Antonio means a lot. That is a career high for him. Mm -hmm. on six and a half sacks and he said he thought it was the new year that uh, he was able to usher in the new year he said he wished the new year had come sooner <laughs> now eric winston said afterward he's hoping there's not one empty seat at reliance stadium saturday when they play cincinnati and they want the crowd to be as loud as it was for atlanta andy dalton's rookie quarterback he's three and oh at reliance stadium he's got a better record at reliance stadium than tj yates what do you think the crowd could do to Andy Dalton? Oh, it's not what I think they can do. I know what they're going to do, and I'm glad you referenced the Atlanta game because for some reason that's the game that stood out in my mind. The fans in Houston, they're awesome. They're the best fans in the country. They've been supporting this team for nine years without making it to the playoffs. They deserve this, but it's going to be loud, and I think the 12th man is going to affect Andy Dalton. He's a rookie, though he's a rookie with a lot of experience. When he comes into Reliance Stadium and the fans are as loud as they were in Atlanta, he's going to have problems 
relaying the message to his offensive linemen, to his wide receivers. And we saw it in the Atlanta game. You saw Matt Ryan running up and down the line, having to bark at his offensive linemen what to do. That gets you out of your flow. That affects what you do as a quarterback. And with a guy who's inexperienced, I really, really expect this crowd to be of help to the Texans. And you're going to see it. You're going to see when Kyle Cook, his offensive lineman, is turning around saying, I can't hear you. And he's telling the guard what the play is. All those little things, they affect you. And that's what you need when you're in playoffs. Any advantage is going to help. So you're going to have to pat some of those fans on after the game when you, they win because they're so loud. You expect some delay of games and illegal procedures? I, I do. And even if they don't get the actual delay of game, you could just tell it, it's going to be a cluster in there and they're not going to be confident. They're not going to be comfortable. Then when the offense, the Texan offense is on the field because they are smart fans, they'll keep it down and you'll see how smooth it rolls. I believe this is the first time we've had two rookie quarterbacks starting in a, in a uh, playoff game. And T.J. Yates, of course, they lost the last three. He looked really good after he suffered the shoulder separation. Maybe he should have separated that shoulder <laughs> sooner. What did you think on the one series, 4-4, four, four, 47, 90 yard drive, 13 plays, touchdown. I thought it was encouraging, and I thought that was the reason Kubiak took him out. He was hurt. I won't say he's injured, but he's more than likely going to practice all week and play in the playoff game. We don't know until they actually have a practice, which I know you'll be at, but it was just encouraging. And since he did get nicked up, I think Coach Kubiak said, you know what? We're going to the playoffs. We're going to play a home game. There isn't anything we could gain from this game. After that drive, which was very impressive, he went 100% completion percentage. Let's get him out of there. I thought Jake Delon played pretty well for a guy that hadn't played much in, in two years, but a lot of fans go, well, why don't they go with a veteran? He's been in playoff games. He's been in Super Bowls. Why go with a rookie who's now two and three, and he's adamant? It's TJ or bust. What do you think? I think he's absolutely right. Yes, he's a rookie, but this is a rookie that's been here day one. He's been here since before training camp started. I think he understands the system more than Jake DeLome, even though Jake DeLome has that experience factor. And you saw it. You saw it in a couple of plays where Jake DeLome faked a pass to get the guy's hands up. Then he stepped back and completed a pass. That's not something you really coach. That's just experience. And, and you saw the experience with Jake DeLome there. But when it's all said and done, I feel like the way Coach Kubiak feels, TJ Yates is the best man for the job because he understands this entire playbook. Jake DeLone might be a sharp guy, but he's still on, you know, segments of the playbook. I feel TJ Yates knows the entire playbook. The players feel that way too. They like him. They believe that he's the guy to do it. We asked Kubiak, why are you so adamantly behind TJ? What do you see that a lot of fans don't see during games? He said, I see preparation. He said, I see the game plan. He said, we ask our quarterbacks questions about the game plan the night before. The guy gets them all right. He says, he's ready. He's fearless. It's not too big for him. And you, do you realize, Andy, four quarterbacks, they only threw nine interceptions. And I know they were ultra conservative, but only nine interceptions other than Green Bay. That's unbelievable. It is. And Coach Kubiak, that's something he preaches from the days when I was playing under Coach Kubiak at practice. It's all about turnovers on defense. He stresses getting turnovers. But on offense, he's really stressing that you don't turn the ball over. It could be an interception where the wide receiver tips the ball and Coach Kubiak's yelling, saying, I don't care the excuse. We can't turn the ball over. You can't throw the interception. And now you're starting to see it in the results. Not counting guys like Matt Schaub and Matt Leinart who are on who were on IR, and Matt was a backup when Atlanta went to the playoffs. But um, they've got, I think, nine guys who have playoff experience, but the coaching staff is loaded right. with playoff experience. Is that an advantage? Oh, that's definitely an advantage because when you look at the coaching staff, they're the ones who prepare you during the week to get ready for that playoff game. Once the game starts, I don't really play into the whole experience of a playoff game because you understand it's going to be fast, and it takes about one or two series to understand the speed of the game, how it improves, how it gets faster because of the playoffs. And the biggest part is the preparation leading up to the game. It's telling the guys, hey, you know what? There's going to be a little bit more cameras out here. There's going to be national media attention out here. This is the stuff that you have to take care of. This is how you take care of it in preparation. And that's where your leaders come from. And during the week, your coaches, your assistant coaches, your coordinators, those are the people leading your team. You mentioned earlier turnovers by the offense. The defense at one point was forcing a lot of turnovers. They were an AFC best plus 12. They finished plus seven. 
how come the defense has not been forcing more turnovers? Well, when you talk about turnover, sacks, people don't want to hear this. Those come in bunches. You practice it. It's a part of your culture. It's a part of your mentality. But if you're holding a ball and me trying to strip it away, that's what you're supposed to do. But how many times you just know it's going to happen? When you tell somebody to run a certain run stunt, hit the A-gap, if you do it right, you could always hit the A-gap. If I strip it the ball, if I do it right, it doesn't mean I'm always going to get it. So they come in bunches, and it takes two to cause a turnover. Maybe the offense that they're playing they're doing something special they're really focusing on holding on to the rock so I don't think you could say that the defense is slipping in that department because you see the same tenacity they're going after the ball the same way but maybe now offenses are prepared because they know this team has been coached up to strip the ball